watch part one make sure you go on back stop this video go watch the last video of me giving you the first set of wedding tips when planning okay then after you watch that one come on back now if you already watched part one hey welcome back i'm rainbow welcome to my channel make sure you like comment subscribe and share so we're gonna get right on into it so i gave you plenty 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 of wedding tips when planning in part one so it was so much i couldn't get it all in that i needed to do a part two so th we, we're here now all right into it we go so <sighs> did y'all jot all that down? Let, let me see first did you jot everything down that i gave you in part one you're gonna need it or you're gonna have to keep looking at me in this video again and again and that's up to you i don't mind make sure if you're going to like it and look at it, like it, subscribe, share, right? So you can get more and you can help my channel to grow. Okay, wedding tip, wedding tip. Now this, seem a little, this might seem a little off to some people, but I don't think so. I suggest getting marriage counseling. Yeah, get marriage counseling before you actually get married, right? Make sure... Y'all have talked about certain things that needs to be talked about beforehand, not after. Because there may be some things that come up that maybe maybe you don't maybe you don't want to go through with this wedding with this person. I don't know. Alright. I'm gonna skate on right past that. Something to make sure you talk about with your boo. Who gonna be in a wedding? I know, you might know a lot of people, right? You you had a, you know, you got those friends and them siblings. Sometimes they go neck and neck, like I'm more important than the other. So who gonna be in the wet and who you gonna let be the best man, the maid of honor, and who gonna be the bridesmaids? Or you just say, We ain't doing we ain't doing neither one, so won't nobody get mad. We're gonna just hide a flower girl and the ring bearer. Now since we're talking about who, a lot of people now are doing something, which I'm going to make a video on that next. New wedding traditions. Everybody not doing the uh, traditional flower girl. I have seen one couple, they had their adult brothers be in the wedding and they were the flower boys. And they had their fanny packs. And they, they hyped it up. They were throwing the flowers down the aisle. They hyped the crowd up. It was real cute to me. So, who is going to be in the wedding, right? Also, something to think about. Will you be doing a wedding registry? Rather, Target, Amazon, whoever. Are you going to do a registry? And, um, me personally... I think the registry would be for couples who, like, hadn't lived together yet, and then they're coming together, you know, maybe both, you're just getting established. So, if you've been together three plus years, y'all been living together and all that, I really don't think you need a registry, but that's just my opinion. You do what you want to do. Think of what you would need, you know. That's how uh, the gifts came really started. Within weddings, people giving wedding gifts was because assuming bride and groom did not live with each other, you know, you both coming together from out your parents' house. Now y'all got the house, you moved together, you ain't got no pots, you ain't got no sheets, you know, you ain't got no furniture, stuff like that is kind of how the gifts came about. Anyway, something to also think about. Um, will you have alcohol at your wedding? You do not, do not have to. People, I don't, I don't know where that rule came of, you know, I got to get a bartender. I got to da, 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 da. Some people do not have alcohol at all, even for their toasting. You toast into whatever tea, water, juice, soda you got in hand. So think about the expense for one to have alcohol. Making sure that 
it ain't no BYOB. Because I don't, depending on the people you know, you got to think about. You're responsible. Do you want to be responsible that they left your wedding and John John and Scotty then had six drinks tonight, no designated driver, and they got in an accident, but they got pulled over leaving your wedding, right? <laughs> or are you going to just have wine and champagne? Is it going to be an open bar? Is there going to be a limit to the alcohol? Are you going to have trained bartenders or you going to let Cat Cat fix the drinks because she do selling parties? Y'all know what them selling parties is. Don't be acting like y'all too bougie. Cause I got, don't think, I don't know what them selling parties is because I got this dress on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so think about the alcohol. Do you want it? How you going to have it? If you're going to have it and so forth. I'm laughing because I'm a parent. First of all, I am a parent. I have four children. Um, match it, my youngest, he 12. So, this part, I'm sorry if you're sensitive or you're guest sensitive, but in all honesty, do you want children at your wedding? So, I just talked about three minutes ago that everybody doesn't use children as the flower girl or the ring bearer, right? Even if you do, maybe it's just those two to three children in the wedding itself. But do you want to be open to having the guests bringing their children on your wedding day? Especially small children. Uh, if you look at my last video, you hear me stated that my sister-in-law got married. So it wasn't a lot of children. But her children, her sister's children, well, our sister's children, and one more person had a baby there. And then I think one, so it was a total of probably as far as younger children under the age of 10, it was, it's probably about eight to 10 of those little, little, little jokers. So, having children at the wedding, right? You know, you can't, you got to hold kids' attention. It's a wedding. How are you going to hold their attention? So, they're either running around or, you know, you're drinking. You don't want to drink around the kids. You want to have a good time. You might can't play certain music because the kid's there. You might can't dance the way you want to because the kid's there. So, also, you know, you got some, you got the little babies, you know, they break out, have their little tantrums, crying, different stuff like that. Do you want to have that interfere. If you don't mind, that's cool. Me personally, like I said, my youngest is 12, old enough to know that we'll be fine. But if I was getting married right now, which me and my wife are about to celebrate our five year wedding anniversary, and I originally was gonna do a big old event, and that changed my mind. And I ain't gonna lie, one of the things, I don't want no children, I, I, I don't want no little kids. Like, I like to enjoy my adult time. <laughs> so. That's something to think about, all right? And like I said, you can have kids, and if you have the ones that are in the wedding, it's something to think about. Are they going to stay for the entire reception? Are you going to have a designated maybe teenager that can keep an eye on them at the wedding? Or are you going to have them someone come pick them up at a certain time? So those things to think about when having children at the wedding, right? Look at them little suckers. They were running around. I had to blow a couple of candles out. I had to blow the candles out that was on stage eventually because they that was right there in front of the sweetheart table because they kept on zooming and I was so scared that they was going to get burnt. At the end of the night, I did see a little wax spill and I know where it come from with <laughs> kids. So that's something to be mindful of. Moving on. Something to think about, of course, is your colors. What colors do you want? What's the theme you're going for? And what's the feel, the vibe that you want to give off to your guests and for yourself at the wedding? Are you going for romantic? Maybe you might be going for, you know, a modern thing. You might be going old school. You know, you're going for high class elegance. Or, you, you know, what are you going for? And... Think, don't think that you just got to stick 
to two colors or three colors. And don't think also that you have to stick with whatever trends that's going on. You do not have to do what everybody is doing. You don't got to try to keep up with the Joneses. Do what you want to do. So if you like pink and gold and he like white and black, why not bring it all together, right? Why not? Who, who said you can't? Pink, gold, black, white. Why not? So, think of your theme, okay? I mean, the forgetting right. Change of clothes. Well, you be staying in that. You might got one of them big fufu gowns. You plan on being in that gown all day. Does he plan on being in... You know, or, hey, it's a certain time we want to relax. So, that's something to think of. Also, something to think of is your vows. Will you be just saying what the pastor tell you to say, or will y'all be writing your own personal vows, right? And if you do, give yourself enough time to write them. Maybe it might be something you need to add on or change. So make sure you start, if you're going to write them, write them in a timely manner so you can do any adjustments that you need to do within doing those. When doing your wedding. Are you going to be doing any symbolic traditions? Um, you know, jumping the broom, tying the knot, pulling the sand, those type of things. Make sure you think about it ahead of time so you can plan it accordingly. Think of, you know, hey, your family might have a certain tradition. Their family may have a certain tradition. Do you plan on doing one or the other or both or none? Food. We, you, you got to feed the people. You're going to be hungry. They're going to be hungry. We all been dealing, doing this event for a couple of hours. They got to eat. And I ain't talking about no little, little, little crust sandwiches and crackers. That ain't, that ain't going to cut it. What are the people going to eat? Also, you be mindful to think about, are you going to do a sit-down dinner where they're served will you be doing a buffet line or will you have somebody that's just you have stations where you know you might have a couple of little things over here a couple of little things out over there um i know one wedding that i went to where after the ceremony they had someone that had some people that go, went around serving little hors d'oeuvres uh little lamb chops different little things to try while waiting for them to switch over and change out the decor for the reception so that was nice and they had an open you know open bar which was nice as well okay make sure you are sure of who your help is and when i mean help from Getting everything in, getting everything out, making sure you stay on point, um, making sure the kids are situated, making sure you didn't leave nothing behind at the house, all those type of things, making sure that you get out on time, everything's shut down, boom, boom, boom. Make sure to know who your help is and it's not coming to a thing of when it comes down to certain stuff, everybody looking at each other, okay? Mm -hmm. One of the important things, make sure you know who you're doing this wedding for. Is it for you and them? And I mean them as in the person you're marrying. Or is it for all the people you're inviting and for Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and Snapchat or whoever else? Who is the wedding for? So, when you're thinking about things, Who helping you do it? Who not helping you do it? When if when when it comes down that uh you need something, who 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 gonna be there? Is it gonna be them, Facebook, TikTok, or just you and them? Okay. So remember who the wedding is really for. So something I want you to know is you do not have to buy every wedding thing that is available and i mean everything you just oh 
say you got two years before your wedding day come, right? So you saw some um you saw a wedding guest book today on sale at Hobby Lobby. You brought it. Then Black Friday come. They had somebody Target had a nice sale and you brought another one and you just you don't have to buy everything you see just because it's dealing with wedding. Also remember that you also don't have to buy everything that's cause dealing with the wedding. Some stuff can be rentals. Some stuff can be DIYs. Make sure you know what do you want within each of those things. And, you know, is it cost effective? Like, you're not going to sit here. You go sit here and buy 30 tablecloths, right? You, you went and brought 30 tablecloths from off of Amazon. And you know you're not going to use these 30 tablecloths again. Why not rent some from somewhere, right? Unless you plan on selling them or something like that. Or glass vases and china and stuff like that. You can rent it. Believe me, anything that you need for a wedding can be rented. From down from the silverware to the plate to the picture frame to the vase to the flowers to the easel to the cake stand to the chair. <laughs> it can be rented. You don't have to buy it. And some things you may want to DIY to have your own personal touch. That is okay. I do not suggest trying to DIY the entire wedding. If that ain't something you into. Okay. Some things you can do. Some things uh, don't do it. Yes. There's something to talk about. So... When setting your wedding date, you send out your invitations, right? And you may say you have the last day to RSVP on this date. You and your soon-to-be beforehand, when you send out these invitations, need to mentally and physically talk about if somebody comes to you after that date has closed. So... It was one couple that didn't RSVP because they had a child that was in the hospital in ICU. The child was born, you know, I guess, in the hospital. Don't know full details. But they never RSVP because they wasn't sure when the baby was getting out of the hospital. So the room let me know, you know, hey, yeah, they're good to go. Understood. Another person was supposed to be out of the town, out of the country or something. And... As of the date, which was a sibling, RSVP. I thought that was special because, hey, it was kind of sucked that, hey, their sibling wasn't going to be there and they, last minute, hey, I'm coming. Think about that. Some people may be, I don't care who it is, if grandma didn't RSVP, grandma ain't coming. Because you do have to think about the finances of this. You may have already planned a certain budget and paid for everything. And now this person, the week of, say, hey, I'm coming. Hey, I only have a exact amount of chairs for the people who are RSVP. So now that you're coming, that's another plate. That's another chair. We already made it so the seating was even. So now you're making it an odd number at one of the tables, whatever the case may be. Think about that. Talk about it with your mate. Since I'm talking about seating, make sure y'all do your seating arrangements, right? So, unless you're just one of those people you want open seating, you don't care who sits where, boom. Now, and, and I mean, but it needs to be some type of arrangement because, like, if you have people in your wedding, maybe you want them up close. Maybe the kids, you, or your kids, you want up front so they can see mommy and, you know, and daddy or whomever up close. Also... You may be different that you, hey, table one, I'm going to have X, Y, Z at that table. Table two, and X, Y, Z at that table. Having, it doesn't have to now, I would say you don't have to go down, hey, which I know one wedding I did go to, they did have it, the exact seating because they had these cute little wooden engraved names with our names on it. So we went to the wedding, you know, 
my name was right here on the plate and i think my wife's name was either right here or right here you know so they had exact seating you don't have to go that far at least knowing what table why i say try to depending on you know you only know your guests so if you're inviting your mom of course and your dad they haven't been together in 25 years and still can't stand each other they both been remarried and the exes don't get along with the new person and you don't want them at the same table you know your bestie don't like your sister because you know or you got an ex an ex coming you don't want them at the front you know looking you, you don't want them. You don't want your mate to look right in front of the ex face, especially they might be all right with them, but it's like, unless they just want to rub in their face, I got, I got her, you know. You, so, having at least what table they will sit at is a good thing, you know. Okay, the last thing, last thing I believe would be making sure you have a timeline, right? So, right, like, to mentally know. This is how the wedding is going. Even though whoever's hosting it or whatever like that, DJ, you know, the MC will be saying things over the mic to let people know what's going on or whatever. It is good for you to mentally know how your day is going to go. So you can mentally have a note in your head and then looking crazy when the day comes. And you're like, hold up, I didn't know this was about to happen. What's going on? Type of thing. All right. So this one, I think, was a little shorter than the last one. Got right into it. So, I hope these wedding tips have helped you. Um, if I left out some things, make sure y'all leave in the comments, you know, what else. Like, what wedding tips that you can have for someone else. Also, if you're getting married, let me know, you know, when's the wedding. Um, anybody having a destination weddings or anything like that. Um, if you already are married, you know, how long have you been married and stuff like that. Um, leave some tips because getting married... That's like one of the biggest things to do, especially if you have a full-fledged wedding versus just going to the justice of peace, right? It, it, it's a lot. It's a lot with it. So, again, again, I hope this helped some newly engaged people out. Um, I look forward to and I'm going to be coming with a couple of my, couple of my little wedding videos. Uh, clearly, like I said, me and my wife, our five-year wedding anniversary is coming up. So, <laughs> maybe... Y'all see a little something, something. Thank you for watching. Again, I appreciate it. Make sure if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed to this video, to my channel. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you share. And make sure you definitely comment. I want to talk to y'all. I like, I like talking clearly. All right. See you guys.